What is up guys this is Pinzo back with another video today and what we've got for you today is a video where we look over the character Boris. Boris is one of my favorite characters in Fault and it's not really a secret right now that he is very very bad. He has less than a 15% pick rate and that's just not somewhere where you want a character in a game where you only have you know 15 heroes to choose from. While I agree that not every character needs to be the best at any given time, every character should be pickable right now. When you only have 15 heroes in your game, every one of them should be able to be picked and win a game if played well. Right now, Boris, even when played well, just gets outclassed by basically every other jungler in the game. Today, we're going to be going over each part of his kit from his passive through all of his abilities, and we're going to be going over what's wrong with each part and fixes that I have thought up for each part of them. Of course, not every fix needs to go through. If every fix went through on each ability, then he would be super OP. I think only maybe one or two of his abilities actually needs changed for him to be considered a good pick again. But with that out of the way, we are going to go through his kit piece by piece, starting with his passive. Boris's passive is called Bloodlust. What this passive does is it gives him innate lifesteal on his in-hands, and it makes you do more damage per your missing health and your target's percent missing health. This passive got nerfed back in patch 6.0, and since the damage has been negligible. The lifesteal is still nice, late game it gives you 10% lifesteal, but the damage that it gives is not noticeable at any point in the game after the nerf. They could revert this and I think it'd be just fine, of course if you're going to change the other parts of his kit then you probably don't want to touch the passive, but right now this is probably one of the weaker passives in the game. Moving on to Boris's abilities, we start with his E, Bare Necessities. The reason we're starting with this ability is because I think that changing this ability alone could be enough to make him good. The reason that this ability is bad is because it has a cast delay on it. In patch 5.1, SMS said, While we are still working on Boris's E ability having an unintentional cast delay, all the others had been fixed and improved. Noting that Boris's E had an unintentional cast delay. Flash forward to November the 9th as of recording this, and that ability still has a cast delay on it. It's about a two second cast delay, and that is not acceptable. On an ability that is a steroid that you're trying to pop to turn a fight, or that you're popping for CC immunity that it gives at max to canisters, you have to have that ability come out instantly. When it doesn't, this ability no longer matters. It's more useful for soloing Raptor early game than it is for anything else. Now I'd like to restate, this ability is insane. It has CC immunity on it, it has movement speed on it, it increases his damage, it increases his lifesteal. Those are all really good. But when it's unusable because of the cast delay, the ability suffers and the character suffers as well. The obvious fix for this is if you make this ability instant, it becomes the best ability in the game and I think Boris is back purely because of that. But we're just going to get that one out of the way because I don't think that ability, the numbers, don't need tweaked at all in my opinion. They just need to fix the cast delay and then that ability is good. Now moving on to his more problematic abilities, we're going to start with his Q. Boris's Q ability is called Blood Tracker. This ability was crazy upon release and it was soon nerfed in patch 3.0 and I would say that now it's pretty bad. What this ability does is, upon activation, you gain move speed moving toward a marked target, and you gain attack speed when in melee range with that target. This ability would be okay, but the attack speed doesn't kick in right away. You have to sit in melee range for a second and a half, two seconds to actually gain that attack speed, and I think that's where the main problem of this ability comes into play. If you get that attack speed immediately, then it gives you some burst damage upon getting to melee range. It allows you to track someone down, and when you get to them, you get to just go ham with crazy fast autos. Right now, that doesn't really work, and I think that that's problem number one with this ability. As for how I'd fix this ability, number one, obviously, you have to get that attack speed right when you hit melee range. Number two, I think that you make this ability's duration scale. Right now, this ability's duration is 10 seconds at all ranks, and I think if you change that to starting at, say, 4 or 5 seconds at rank 1, but you increase the potency of this ability, then it allows bear players to have to make more decisions, but to be a little more aggro early game where he used to be very strong. If this ability is a 4 second duration at level 1, you can give it its potency back, give it some more move speed, give it even some more attack speed, and this ability would still be able to kill people at level 1, but you would have a much smaller window to do so. If you pop this ability and it's a 4 second duration and then you get cc'd by a Bellica, 
there goes one second of your duration and you just wasted that cooldown. It's going to require decision making, but it would also be rewarding when used correctly. You could even have this scale up to a lower duration than it is now, say capping at 7 or 8 seconds, and this ability would still be quite strong. I think that you'd have to give it a little more move speed if you were to scale this duration, and the attack speed could even stay where it is right now. I think that this would be the best way to tweak this ability that would make it better, but also you'd have to be better at using it and timing when you want to go in. I think that this would give bear players a couple more options as for when they engage and how they engage, and it would give them some early game potential where right now he is very, very lacking. But that's my fix for his Q ability. Moving on, we're going to move into his right mouse button, his maul. Boris's right mouse button is called maul. This ability is a short range dash that delivers two auto attacks to anybody hit by it. This is an interesting ability because it does proc any in hand effects, however it cannot crit. This ability, when released, started at 75% of your in-hand damage, scaling to 135% at max rank, and then in patch 5.1, it was buffed to start at 90% and scale to 150, and then in patch 6.0, it was tuned down to starting at 70 and scaling to 110%, which is lower than its original value when he released. This ability is interesting because it is the only CC immune dash in the game. Boris cannot be CC'd while he's using this dash, which allows you to use it to dodge CCs such as Bellica, Stun is the easy one, but also steals dashes and stuff like that. He can't be stopped. It is a cool concept of just delivering auto attacks. However, I think that this ability has a couple interesting fixes. We're going to go over a couple different ways that you could fix this ability. Obviously, you could just buff it again. I think that the 5.1 values are okay. It would give him some burst damage, but it also really increases his early clear, which is where he really struggles. However, you could make this a straight damaging ability and not scale it off of his auto attacks, and that would also give him another sort of playstyle where you can build more power, and this ability would still hit pretty hard. If you made this just a straight damaging ability, you could still have it trigger your in-hand effects, and there wouldn't really be a problem to that if that's what you want to go for, where this would apply red buff, this would apply Gravedigger's crossbow, stuff like that. Or you can make this ability, this is my favorite tweak, you can make this ability have a chance to crit. There's a character in Smite called Sir Ket who has a dash that hits three times and it can crit. This gave her a very unique playstyle called Sir Crit, where you can CC someone and if you dash them and you crit them three times, they kind of just die. It's a very interesting playstyle, pretty unique to her, as it's one of the few abilities in the, that game that can crit, and I think that the same thing could happen to Boris here. It would allow you to just ult someone at the start of a fight and dash them when you hit your ult, and with that, you could potentially just insta-kill people. This wouldn't be a whole lot different than getting three shot by a carry, and with this, you would be built very aggressively, so you'd be squishy after you got into the backline as well. At the very least, giving this ability the chance to crit would give you a different playstyle to Boris that you currently don't have, just a more aggressive, glass cannony all-in kind of playstyle that would allow you to potentially have this critting dash on like an 8 second cooldown that would just give you some more variation to the way that you play Boris. Moving on to Boris's final ability, his ultimate, this ultimate is Rocket Slam. This ability is very, very bad. The main reason is pitiful base damage plus okay scaling on a very long cooldown is not very good. You might be saying this ability does bonus damage based on your opponent's missing HP. Well, there's some math we'll get into later on why that's not good, and you might be saying, hey, this ability has an execute. Also, math, not good. We'll get into it. First, I'm going to compare this to a much better ultimate in Chimera's Bestial Wrath. Chimera's ult does higher base damage at every rank, up to 150 more base damage at max rank, same scaling, and it stuns, and it gives him passive stacks, and it knocks back any other enemies nearby, and it has a substantially lower cooldown late game. Chimera's ult is also regarded to be somewhat weak simply because you can stun people out of it. However, this ultimate casts very quickly, you have to have some actually good reaction time to stun people out of it, and on top of that, bear ultimate can also be stunned before you hit the ground and negated as such. So, using these two ultimates as my comparison, we're going to do some math. Using 200 physical power as my baseline, which is more than you'd probably normally have 
but 200 is kind of the borderline where bear actually becomes comparable to chimera any less power than this in chimera's ultimate is better flat out using 200 physical power chimera ult will hit for 610 damage pre-mitigation Boris ult would hit for 460 that's a very big difference in their powers just on the base damage and you might be saying well that's not with the extra scaling that boris gets for boris ult to hit for 610 he would have to ult someone at 40 percent hp at 40 percent he's going to be doing 611 damage kai ult will hit for 610 against someone full health this allows chimera to jump on someone ult them and you can kind of just insta kill people late game with chimera ult hitting hard like that Boris ult you don't have that option it's almost used entirely to finish off someone at low hp at which point you might be saying it has an execute late game boris ult executes at 20 percent hp well if your target has 20 percent hp that means they are missing 80 percent of their health boris's ult scales damage based on percent health missing from your target meaning if your target is missing 80 percent of their health and are in the execute range your ult is actually hitting 44% harder. That means that your 460 damage ult is now hitting for 660 damage. Well, 660 is going to be more than 20% of your target's HP almost every time. Your target would have to have more than 3,300 health to outlive this 660 as an execute range, meaning that your ult is often hitting harder than the execute range is usable in. Against squishies, this ult will always be hitting harder than the execute range that would be present. Whereas against tanks, every once in a while you will get this execute range to actually matter. This is an issue because the ability is simply trying to be two things in one. It either needs to be a damaging ability or it needs to be an execute, which are the two ways that I would take this ability. Step 1. You either reduce the base damage by a lot. You make this deal say 75 150 to 25 damage as base numbers you can even keep the same scaling on it because it doesn't matter quite as much but you increase the execute range by an immense amount say starting at 24 percent scaling to 30 and then ending at 36 percent this would allow your execute to be useful against tanks but also against squishies because you'd only have to land two three four autos before you can ult and finish someone off if SMS does not think that this is the way that they should take the ult, a single target lock on execute at 36%, if they think that's too strong, then you can take it the damaging route. You make the base numbers the same as Chimera ults, and you put another stat on it. With this damaging ult that puts you smack dab into the middle of the enemy team, you would need either some sort of CC or some sort of survivability on it. Let's say you gain 30 energy and 30 physical protections upon hitting the ground, and you keep those protections for 3 seconds. This would make this a great engagement tool, it gets you straight into the back line, and it allows you to stick onto people immediately when the fight begins. Or you give this some sort of CC, say it slows the target by 30%. This would allow it to be a good engagement tool still, but also useful for tracking people down when fights get scrappy. Both of these would be better ways to take this ult rather than the 50-50 that it's trying to be right now, and I just really think this ult needs to choose a direction in order for the character to survive and make an identity for himself as more characters are added. Well guys, in today's video we went over all of Boris's abilities, possible fixes for him, what's wrong with him, but this is just my opinion. If you guys agree, disagree, let me know in the comments down below. Let me know what you guys think of Boris and his kit right now. Any fixes you guys have that I didn't come up with, drop them in the comments. I'm really curious what you guys have to say. As always, if you did enjoy, please do leave a like, subscribe if you're new, all that kind of jazz. But that's it for today's video. I've been Pinso. This video's done, so thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.